Okay, so welcome back to the last lecture by Kodor. Uh, he's, today he's going to tell us about the example and singularity. Please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so the goal of today's lecture is to show you how this formalism that uh, I described so far works uh, in an example. Um, so actually, let me start first with uh, a uh, summary of the main uh, results uh, in my lecture. So this is some kind of the results that are needed in order to prove uh, Hirota quadratic equations. Uh, so first, uh, the first part of results are related to conjugation by the calibration. So, so suppose that S is a calibration. So let me suppress the dependence of the calibration on T and Z because otherwise the formulas become huge. Suppose that this is a calibration, then the first formula is that these tilde vertex operators, uh, sorry, in my note it's A, they can be conjugated with the quantization of S inverse this way. So there is some phase factor here. Uh, then S inverse. And then you obtain uh, the vertex operator corresponding to the periods, uh, where the phase factor uh, W A of T lambda is exponential of W A A T lambda lambda. Uh, yeah, so I talked about this uh, symmetric quadratic form W that you construct from the S, uh, from the calibration uh, quite a bit. So let me just skip the definition today. Uh, and now we have the following. So in fact, for this uh, form W, we have uh, the following uh, facts. Uh, first of all, uh, if you have a point T circle where W T circle is zero. So for example, if you have a point T where the calibration is one, then this quadratic form is automatically zero, uh, right? So this would happen in singularity theory, for example. Uh, if W T is zero for some T, uh, then uh, you can write uh, more generally. We can find uh, we can write these factors uh, as an integral with respect to the phase form. Actually, you'll see from my argument today that the only thing that we need is that the analytic continuation of, uh, of, of this phase factor W alpha beta along a closed loop amounts to adding uh, an integral of the phase form along the closed loop. So that's actually the property that we need. Um, so second, uh, this quadratic form uh, can be written as a difference of two propagators, uh, namely the propagator for the vertex operator constructed by periods and the propagator that we used for the tilde, using the tilde periods. So I denoted this propagator with omega tilde. Uh, so this is the second property. Uh, the third property is uh, if C is a simple loop, simple loop, 
and phi is the corresponding reflection vector Uh, then the integral of the phase form along this uh, uh, loop uh, lambda 2 minus lambda 1 can be expressed in terms of the propagators in the following way. It's omega rc of alpha rc of beta of lambda 1 lambda 2 minus omega alpha beta t of lambda 1 lambda 2 minus 2 pi i and here we have this uh, term with involving the intersection form in the Euler form uh, and finally I did not discuss this property but you can easily prove it from the definitions if you differentiate w alpha beta t lambda lambda, so both arguments now uh, are equal, so this is along the diagonal, uh, then you see that this infinite sum that defines this quadratic form collapses and you get the following difference. Minus Uh, sorry, this is beta. And these are actually the main properties for the S conjugation. Right? So these four properties. Uh, right. uh, and now uh, there is one more property that I want to list. So this is for the conjugation by near the discriminant. So uh, let me draw again this picture. So uh, I am going to assume that I am in M uh, times C, right? So this is my reference point. Uh, let's say that this is the discriminant. And then we were interested what happens in the neighborhood of the discriminant. So here this C is a reference path to T lambda, any reference path. Uh, and T lambda, lambda is sufficiently close to uh, UI of UI. So T UI is a point on the discriminant. Uh, okay, uh, and now the following quantity actually will turn out to be very important. So let me define it. VIA of T lambda is just a function. Limit when epsilon approaches zero, exponential, integral T minus lambda one, T minus ui plus epsilon times one, then w a a s zero. Uh, actually, I cannot fit it on one line, so let me just put this on the next line. So I'll put it here. Uh, plus this is the intersection pairing of a phi square du s divide du i of s divided by 2 u i of s. So we integrate this one form. Uh, okay, I, I just want to make uh, a comment about this uh, term that so here ui is the function such that locally the discriminant is given by the equation lambda equals ui. Right? Um, and in principle, this phase form has a pole along the, along the discriminant. Uh, and uh, this term removes the singular term from the phase form. So therefore, this, so that this limit exists. Right? So 
one can check this this is some local computation uh, so here c is a so let me just say that c is the reference path uh, and phi is the corresponding reflection vector reflection vector uh, right so this is just a definition uh, so now given a vector in h uh, then uh, what we can do is uh, let us decompose a in this way so a i'll write it as a prime plus uh, a phi divided by two times phi so if you wish this is a definition of a prime right so a prime is a minus uh, this uh, a phi over two times phi right uh, note that with this definition, since uh, uh, I explained last time that the intersection pairing of phi phi is 2, uh, you get from this immediately that a prime phi is 0. Uh, so therefore, a prime is invariant with respect to the local monodromia around the discriminant. And in particular, uh, these, all these periods are analytic analytic at lambda equals ui okay. right. so in other words if you have a, a, a any vector in in h then we decompose it uh, near the discriminant we can decompose it into an in a part which is invariant with respect to the local monodromy times some multiple of the reflection vector right. Uh, and then we have the following formula. Uh, so then the vertex operator gamma a of t lambda. Uh, we, we don't conjugate the, the entire vertex operator. We can decompose this vertex operator into the vertex operator corresponding to a prime and the vertex operator corresponding to the reflection vector. And the vertex operator corresponding to the reflection vector conjugates nicely with uh, the symplectic transformation. Uh, and uh, by doing this, you gain some phase factor, and it turns out that this phase factor is exactly the following quantity. Uh, Vi a prime t lambda divided by v i a t lambda to the power one half and then the rest is just uh, gamma of a prime t lambda then the symplectic transformation uh, and then when you conjugate the reflection vector you obtain uh, this vertex operator of kdv right so this is the formula and uh, let me uh, let me just emphasize that these quantities uh, gamma a prime of t lambda and this part of the phase factor vi a prime of t lambda uh, so uh, vi a prime t lambda and gamma a prime of t lambda are analytic analytic at lambda equals u i of t so in some sense the, the left hand side uh, we did something like uh, well not quite beautiful factorization so but it's we decompose it as something regular times something that uh, has singularity right? Uh, okay, and these are actually uh, so this uh, this uh, well this is the fifth fact right. Um, this is all that we need uh, in order to work out this example for any singularity. And I I claim that these uh, these facts uh, is everything you need to, if you want to prove uh, that the total descendant potential 
of some semi-simple of Rubinius manifold satisfies some Hirota quadratic equations. Uh, okay, so uh, let me move now to the example. Uh, so are there... I have one question. Yeah, yes. Where does this A and singularity information come from? Uh, which which information particularly rely on A and singularity? So here is general. This what I said here is for any uh, any right so far any semi simple Frobenius manifold. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the only assumption that I'm making is that it's calibrated. Okay. Right. right. Uh huh. Okay, but you haven't gone into the detail of this example yet. Yes, the example okay. starts from now. Oh, okay, okay, I understand. Okay, thanks. Okay, so uh, so let me start now with the example. So Frobenius structure. for a n singularity. Uh, so uh, I'm going to take a n singularity in the following form. It's just this um, uh, simple function, right? So it has isolated critical point at x equals zero. Uh, then uh, we take uh, what is called uh, universal deformation. And the universal deformation in this case is constructed in this way. And so this is called universal deformation. deformation and here the deformation parameters t are allowed to take any values so my Frobenius manifold would be uh, c to the n and so the space of universal deformations uh, note that these monomials that I use to deform the singularity uh, they represent a basis, a basis of, of the Jacobi algebra. Uh, which is just uh, Cx quotient by the derivative of the function. Uh, okay, and uh, now uh, the key to the construction of the Frobenius structure is the following, uh, what is called Kodaira Spencer isomorphism. Kodaira uh, Spencer isomorphism. Uh, so each tangent space of our universal deformation is naturally identified with a Jacobi algebra. Is identified with a Jacobi algebra, right? Uh, by this in this way, so the vector field DDTI is uh, uh, mapped to the to the class of DF DTI. Right. Uh, and now from this construction, first of all, most importantly, uh, the Jacobi algebra is an algebra, so it has a multiplication. So therefore, by this isomorphism, each tangent space uh, is equipped with a multiplication. This is multiplication in TTM corresponding to multiplication in the Jacobi algebra. Right, so this would be our Frobenius multiplication. Uh, now, uh, there is a vector field, namely, uh, let me write it this way, uh, vector field which corresponds to the unit in the algebra. This would be the unit vector field, right? 
and uh, clearly in, in our notation, uh, know that this is exactly the uh, vector field uh, corresponding to T1, right? So E equals D T1. Uh, there is also the Euler vector field. This, it corresponds to uh, to the function f. Uh, uh, by, by the way, uh, there was a question earlier in about the uh, the notion of Euler vector field. Uh, uh, it, actually, it was invented. Uh, this this terminology comes from the work of Kyoji Saito. Uh, so he invented this uh, Euler vector field in, in his theory of primitive forms. And basically he used it uh, in order to characterize when is the singularity quasi-homogeneous, uh, right? So um, just a remark. Uh, so this is Euler vector field. So he uh, actually Kyoji Saito he proved very interesting result. So he proved that your singularity is quasi homogeneous if and only if the class of the function f is zero in the Jacobi algebra. In one direction it's obvious. So if it's quasi homogeneous that it's in the it's zero in the Jacobi algebra, that's obvious. But the opposite direction is not obvious. Okay, and uh, you can work out in this case that the Euler vector field uh, actually takes the following form. Uh, okay, and finally, uh, uh, the pairing. Uh, it, it's called residual pairing. Residual pairing, so it's defined this way. So the pairing of two vector fields is defined as you take a sum over all critical points of the function f, and then you compute residual of f prime ti f prime tj divided by f prime of x dx. Uh, and then the, the main claim is that uh, m with the multiplication, the residual pairing, the Euler vector field and E, this is a, is a Frobenius manifold. Manifold of conformal dimension. Dimension D equals, let me write it as one minus two H. So this number n plus one appears so many times that uh, I'm going to denote it with h. And actually this is the Coxeter number of the root system of type n. Uh, okay. And uh, now one, once you, uh, so this is our Frobenius uh, manifold. So the next step, uh, in the, the construction of the Hirota quadratic equation is to, is to determine the reflection vectors. And for, uh, for A in singularity, this is not uh, hard to do, uh, but nevertheless, I don't have time to explain it. So let me just state the result. Uh, so to begin with, let me just uh, identify let me just trivialize cotangent bundle. So we identify cotangent bundle with tangent bundle using the residual pairing. Uh, then we trivialize the tangent bundle using the flat Levitchevita connection. And finally, we identify the tangent space at zero with H 
uh, using the Kudaira Spencer isomorphism. Uh, okay. Uh, and then uh, it's not hard to see that uh, in this case there exists a unique calibration S of TZ uh, such that the corresponding operator rho is zero, rho is zero, uh, and also S of zero Z is the identity operator. So in particular, in this case, these tilde periods are equal to I M alpha of zero lambda. So they are actual periods uh, of uh, the Frobenius manifold. Uh, and let me just recall you that the, by the explicit formula, these, uh, these are just lambda to the theta minus m minus one half divided by gamma of theta minus m plus one half alpha. Theta is the grading operator and the grading operator which is the grading operator. Uh, let me give you an explicit formula for the grading operator. It's equal to one minus I over H phi I. So this basis that we chose uh, of the Jacobi algebra is an Eigen basis for the grading operator actually. Uh, Okay, and then we have the following proposition. Uh, the set of reflection vectors uh, are given by this set kappa a, uh, chi a minus chi b, uh, where a and B are numbers between one and n plus one, right? Different. Um, where uh, kappa A is the following uh, vector in the local algebra. Okay. Gamma of one minus I divided by H h to the power minus i over h, eta to the minus i a phi i. Eta is the h root of unity, right? Uh, where two pi i over h. Uh, this is part a. Uh, part B, uh, well, we can compute, I, 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 I just, I'm going to give you a formula for the Euler pairing. Because we need them uh, later on. So the, the Euler pairing between Kappa A and Kappa B is the following. One divided by N plus one, A minus B plus n over two if a is less or equal than b and one over n plus one a minus b minus n over two minus one if a is greater than b right, so this is straightforward computation using the definition of the Euler pairing right it was defined in terms of the grading operator uh, and this is actually all that we need, but just for completeness, let me give you two other uh, interesting statements. Uh, see, if you take the reflection lattice, lambda equals the, sp the span over the integers of uh, the reflection vectors. Right. Uh, well, the reflection vectors themselves and the intersection pairing. 
uh, then you can see you can check easily that this is uh, a root system of type a n <clears throat> in part d you can also check that the euler pairing of any two reflection vectors is, is an integer belongs to world right <clears throat> just the Euler pairing of this chi a and chi b is a rational number but somehow when you take the differences uh, you, you get an integer right so so this is this proposition <clears throat> And again, this is not uh, so hard to prove, but the most non-trivial, the idea of the proof of part A, so part A is the non-trivial part, you, uh, one can actually solve, uh, one can express these periods, uh, I am T lambda in terms of uh, period integrals. So there is an integral representation for, for the periods and this integral representation allows you to, to analytically extend from infinity to the uh, to the discriminant and see what the reflection vectors are. <clears throat> and finally, we need <clears throat> one has to do one more computation. So let me list it as proposition two. Uh, the phase factor, or rather the propagator. Uh, omega alpha beta tilde lambda mu. This is actually the same as the propagator at t equals zero uh, is equal to logarithm and then product r equals from one to h one minus eta to the r mu divided by lambda to the one over h beta. Uh, as i explained yesterday we have an explicit formula for some propagator that i denoted with two tildes and i call, called it virasoro propagator uh, and uh, in in the case of a singularity the two the, the virasoro propagator in this till the propagator coincide. Sorry, well, what is the exponent here? Uh, r to the r alpha? Sigma to the r. Oh, alpha. sigma to the r alpha. Okay. Yes, so... Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, well, so okay. I will try to write it more clearly. So maybe I have to increase this to sigma to the r alpha beta. Uh, as well, let me remind you, sigma was the, the big loop monodromy. <clears throat> so in, I have to go to the next page to write it. Where sigma is the big loop monodromy. This one. In general, I, I had one more term with rho, e to the 2 pi i rho, but rho in my case is zero. So, right. This explicit formula would, uh, in, in general, we, we also have such an explicit formula, up to some finitely many unknown terms which uh, do not really matter. And the formula looks in absolutely the same way that uh, this propagator looks like this. For sigma, you have to take this, the semi-simple part of the of the big loop monodromy and the formula is literally the same and h here is the order of sigma right? uh, okay uh, and now i i, I can uh, start uh, so with this preparation then we are ready to talk about hirota quadratic equations but uh, le let me show you first uh, 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 well, uh, I want to, to discuss the Hirota quadratic equations for the KDV hierarchy.
And uh, this is actually the example, the computation that Given Tao did. And I think it could be viewed as the beginning of all these things that I explained in my lectures. Uh, so let me start with, uh, with Tao functions of the KP hierarchy. Um, so these are some functions on infinitely many variables, y2, etc., whose coefficient satisfy some infinite system of quadratic equations that, uh, that they can be written in the following way. So uh, let us introduce vertex operators, gamma plus minus of zeta equals e to the exponential of plus minus sum n from 1 to infinity y n zeta to the n then exponential minus plus sum n from 1 to infinity then we have d d y n zeta to the minus n minus n mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, so the tau function of kp is just a tau function satisfying is a function satisfying uh, the following uh, bilinear equations residual at zeta equals infinity gamma plus of zeta tensor gamma minus of zeta apply to tau tensor tau equals zero is zero right and if you write this uh, into the uh, if you expand this as a so this tensor product means that we have two copies of these variables y1 two, two copies of the tau function in different sets of variables and then if you expand into the monomials of these two different sets of variables y is uh, then this would uh, amount to some uh, quadratic equations for the for the coefficients of the tau function and there is a geometric interpretation that uh, you can view this as the plucia relations and therefore these equations define an embedding of uh, an infinite grassmannian uh, in this space uh, c of y1 y2 y3 Right. So they could be interpreted. So tau is element here. So this the geometric significance of these equations is that they describe some in the embedding of some infinite Grassmannian in this infinite dimensional vector space. And now uh, for tau function, so the tau function of K dv uh, is defined to be uh, tau function of kp uh, independent of the even variables y2 y4 uh, and now i want to write the hirota quadratic equations for this tau function so let us decompose the vertex operator into uh, odd and even. Uh, so the even, so the, the odd one involves only the variables y1, y3, etc., and the even one involves the variables y2, y4, and etc. Uh, then the, the Herota equations of uh, Kp could be written as, so suppose that tau is a tau function of K dv, uh, right? So suppose tau, it will depend only on the uh, odd variables, right? Is tau function of K dv. Then the Herota equations will take the following form residual zeta equals infinity here you here we'll have exponential sum n from one to infinity then we have y prime n minus y second n zeta to the n and uh, here we'll have gamma plus 
от в дзейта тензор гамма майнус от дзейта apply to tau of to the two copies of the tau function and this is zero right that's how they look um, but now look that uh, uh, sorry uh, here i have to write even variables right so here is only the even variables Uh, but now if you if you think of this equation if you compare the coefficients in front of the monomials that involve uh, the even variables y prime 2n minus y second 2n then you see that actually this is equivalent to the following condition uh, a residual at zeta equals infinity zeta to the 2r so in this is zeta to the 2n Uh, so all these residuals what, and here is, is are, are zero for all r greater or equal than zero uh, and this is equivalent to saying that coefficients in front of <sighs> zeta sorry. to the, it, yes uh, sorry so this y prime y double prime is the uh just formal variable yes so the tensor product simply means that uh, we work with two copies of uh, the vertex oh. operator oh. and two copies of the tau function and in the first copy i denote the variables with y prime in the second with y second Okay. Right, that, that's so. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So uh, now this residual condition simply means that the coefficient in front of the all negative odd powers of zeta are zero. Finish. Uh, and uh, in fact, now uh, we can actually. Um, uh, write this in, in a little bit uh, uh, better way so uh, i claim that this is actually equivalent to the to the following uh, uh, statement that uh, coefficients in front of zeta to the minus 2r for all r greater or equal than than one in And I'm going to write the following expression: one over zeta, one over zeta, and now I'm going to take gamma plus odd of zeta tensor gamma minus odd of zeta minus, and this would be gamma minus odd of zeta tensor gamma plus odd of zeta. Right, so. So know that this expression here equals uh, it equals this uh, I don't know how to denote it uh, well well I'll, I'll just write it so it equals uh, equals gamma plus odd of zeta tensor gamma minus odd of zeta but you replace zeta with minus zeta right because this odd uh, vertex operator they have only these vertex operators have only odd powers of zeta so if you make this substitution zeta to minus zeta then it switches gamma plus and gamma minus so therefore this difference has the effect of uh, uh, removing all even powers of uh, of the operator Uh, gamma plus gamma minus so this difference simply means that we take all odd powers of zeta in this expression right uh, and then when, when i multiply by one over zeta you obtain an expression that has only even powers of zeta 
And then the previous condition simply tells me that uh, in, in the resulting expression simply does not have uh, negative powers of zeta, right? So this condition here. So here we have that all the coefficients in front of all odd negative powers of zeta in this expression are zero. And therefore this statement that I made is uh, equivalent. So, uh, so a priori this, uh, this expression that I wrote here uh, belongs to uh, Z, uh, C, it's a, let me write it and then I'll say it. Well, have to write y prime y second. So it's a formal power series in y prime and y second whose coefficients are Lorentz series in zeta to the minus two. And uh, our condition, the Hirota quadratic equation simply say, say, say that there, there are no negative powers of that. So regularity is equivalent that this uh, belongs to C of zeta square. So the Hirota quadratic, maybe I didn't call it regular, so Hirota quadratic equations. Uh, so, and this is uh, how the Hirota quadratic equations for KDV look like. Right? So we can write it in this way. And, and now I want to compare this vertex operator with the vertex operators for the one dimensional Frobenius manifold. So let us compare uh, gamma hot zeta with gamma point of lambda. Uh, so let me remind you that I zero point of lambda was defined to be two divided by square root of two lambda. And then the remaining periods are derivatives and anti-derivatives. So if you differentiate this uh, I0k times, uh, then you're going to obtain two times minus one to the k, two k minus one double factorial divided by two lambda to the k plus one half. And if you integrate k plus one times, Right, then uh, then you obtain two, there is two lambda to the k plus one half divided by two k plus one double factorial. Double factorial, right? Uh, and then the vertex operator. So actually I'm going to write the vertex operator gamma point. I'll take the square root of this vertex operator. So gamma point of one half, right? And this is exponential of sum k from zero to infinity to lambda to the k plus one half. So you, you simply right, apply the quantization formalism. infinity and this would be with minus 2k minus 1 double factorial divided by 2 lambda to the k plus 1 half square root of h d d q k. So then uh, so we look at the formula for this vertex operator and gamma odd zeta and then we see that they coincide if you make the following substitutions. So put uh, lambda equals zeta square lambda lambda equals zeta square over two and uh, q k equals square root of h bar two k plus one double factorial y two k plus one uh, then. Uh, the vertex operator gamma plus minus one half point of lambda 
exactly coincides gamma plus minus what of zeta. Uh, and by the way, this substitution here is exactly the substitution that is used in Witten conjecture to identify. Uh, so these are the variables in the Witten conserved tau function, and these are the variables that come from the KP hierarchy. So this is exactly the substitution that you need in order to identify the Witten conserved tau function with the tau function of KDV, right? And this was actually the starting point of given tau. So he he knew this substitution, so therefore he made this substitution in the in the vertex operator gamma plus minus of zeta, and then he got this vertex operator gamma one half, and then he knew that uh, these uh, double factorials uh, look like the periods for a one singularity, so therefore he rewrote the vertex operator using these periods. Uh, and then uh, he he, uh, he just tried to do the same for a n singularity and recover that actually there is a general construction behind it. right so that's the origin of this okay but uh, now uh, we can finally uh, say that the Hirota quadratic equations of kdv uh, can be written in, in the following way so one divided by square root of lambda. I now I write them in these variables in lambda and qk. Point one and apply to the tau function is uh, uh, is a regular regular in lambda in other words it belongs to this space uh, uh, c lambda So it's formal power series in Q prime and Q second whose coefficients are polynomials in lambda. So all negative on the coefficients in front of the negative powers of lambda must vanish. I have one question. So when you say this gamma to the one half, this one half means the some lattice? Uh, in, 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 in the one dimensional case, H mm -hmm. is a one dimensional vector space, so yeah. H is just C, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, mm -hmm. I take uh, one half of uh, gamma point, for me, the, this vertex operator, what I denoted by point is, um, uh, well, strictly speaking, I should put square root of two pi. If you look back into my normalization, mm -hmm. I have to write uh, so let me write it here. I is zero. If I pick a complex number, I should write this as lambda to the theta minus one half divided by gamma of one half. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, theta is zero and gamma of one half is square root of, of pi. Mm -hmm. so strictly speaking, I should write one over square root of pi uh, square root of lambda. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So therefore, in order to obtain a point, I have to put point equals, I think, square root of 2 pi, right? Oh, I see. In order to, to fit with this, uh, oh, I see. With my general construction. I see. I see. And this is the normalization, this, this normalization is the one that will give you the reflection vector. I see, I see. So the reflection vector here is square root of 2 pi in this case, right? Uh, but somehow you need not the vertex operator uh, that correspond to the reflection vector, but some kind of square root of it. And, uh, right. Now, actually, there is a description where you use the reflection vectors, which leads to the so-called Katz-Vakimoto hierarchies. But I, I didn't have time to, to explain. There is a little bit more to say if I want to explain the Katsvakimoto hierarchy. So I didn't, uh, that's why I, I have to work with these square roots of. 
Uh, okay, so now let me move to the main theorem that I that I want to prove today. Uh, so this is the final part of my lecture. So Hirota quadratic equations for a n singularity. Ah, by the way, I want to make also one more com uh, comment about uh, the terminology. Usually in the theory of integrable systems, uh, uh, these are, uh, there is a notion of Hirota bilinear equations. So this expression that I wrote here, uh, so this, this residual formula, uh, there is an interpretation that leads to an infinite system of partial differential equations that are usually called Hirota bilinear equations. And in order to get to this uh, interpretation, you have to make, uh, so here you have two copies of the variables, right? So tau of y1 prime, y2 prime, etc. And here this is tau of y1 second, y2 second, and etc. Usually you have to make some substitution, uh, namely you put, uh, I guess, xi equals one half yi prime minus yi second, and then maybe ti equals one half yi prime plus yi second. Uh, and then uh, you can expand the resulting expression in the powers. Somehow with these substitutions, uh, all derivations in xi will disappear. So you have only derivations in ti. And the resulting expression could be expanded as a Taylor series in xi. And you're going to get an infinite system of partial differential equations that are usually called Hirota bilinear equations. Uh, but here I'm using slightly different interpretation, namely I'm just expanding here in the directly in the in Taylor series in y1 in y prime and y second uh, and that's why that's what I call Hirota quadratic equations so uh, my terminology differs from the standard terminology but my interpretation also differs from the standard interpretation so I think it's okay so, okay Okay, so, uh, so now what we want to do is we want to prove that the total descendant potential. So let D be the total descendant potential. So it has this form. Yeah, I just put T here just to uh, remind us that uh, these quantities depend on the deformation parameter. And then we have product of tau functions of KdV. So this is... Uh, the total descendant potential. Uh, and uh, in, in principle, this total descendant potential belongs to the following space. So we have formal power series in Q0 minus tau of T Q1 plus 1, Q2. Uh, so here tau of t simply means the flat coordinates. Flat coordinates. So these deformation parameters that are used to deform the AN singularity uh, in general are not flat coordinates. So um, the, the dependence from these deformation parameters to flat coordinates is non-trivial, right? And I denote it with tau this, the flat coordinates. Actually, these shifts do not really play a role. Um, 
because as you saw, the Hirota equations, they depend on the difference of two copies of the variables. So if I take two copies of these variables and I take their difference, then the shift does not matter, right? And then the theorem that we want to prove is the following. Uh, so put BA of lambda to be the coefficient eta to the a lambda to the one over h minus one. Uh, then uh, this expression um, BA of lambda gamma kappa kappa chi a of lambda. Well, actually, we can write it even zero lambda. So this is the tilde vertex operator. Gamma minus chi a zero of lambda apply to the total descendant potential. And I'll denote this expression with one. So let me denote it with one. Is uh, regular in lambda. In the sense explained uh, above. Uh, in other words, it belongs to this space uh, C of lambda h bar q prime minus uh, tau so you have to view it as a formal so this one should be viewed as a formal power series in q prime q second whose coefficients are Lorentz series in the genus parameter h bar and then the coefficients a priori there will be Lorentz Lorentz series in lambda inverse, but the condition is that uh, the negative powers of lambda would vanish and you have polynomials in lambda. And uh, actually by proving the theorem, you can assume that even these coefficients are unknown and you see that in the course of the proof, uh, we will see that we have to choose these uh, coefficients here. Okay, so, uh, and uh, maybe another comment, if you take uh, A1 singularity, then H is two, right? Uh, and then you uh, you recover exactly the Hirota quadratic equations that I listed here, right? When H is two. The, the A eta here is the H root of, of unity. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so step one is to conjugate. Step one is from descendants to ancestors. Ah, sorry. I, yes. Are you are you going to prove this theorem from now? Yes, I, I want to show some of the key steps in the proof. Oh, okay, can you can you go back one slide? Uh, well, yeah, one page. You, you oh, one more one so theorem then so this equation you you said one right what does it mean yeah it is one right okay I, so i'll call it one th there will be two yeah there will be two right okay but when i don't get by s i'm going to obtain two so oh okay 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 i see, I see. then first you prove one okay uh, so i denote this expression by one right ah i see i see i see Okay, okay. From descendants to ancestors. So, uh, so let's think of the descendant potential as e to the f1 of t, uh, s t of 1, t of h bar q. Actually, for simple singularity, this genus 1 term f1 of t is 0. And, uh, but, anyways, uh, so let us. Con so, uh, so we substitute in the equation this formula for d and you conjugate uh, conjugate by uh, s. So you commute the vertex operators through the quantized uh, symplectic transformation s. Uh, and then you uh, uh, then we see so we already know how to, to uh, how to do this. 
So then uh, we see that we have to prove to prove that uh, uh, now this would be two. Mm. Let me denote this with two. That this expression sum a equals from one to n plus one. Let me denote the coefficients now with b a t lambda means gamma kappa a t lambda tensor gamma minus kappa a t lambda then is the ancestor potential is regular it's regular uh, where the coefficients uh, the coefficients b a of t lambda are b a of lambda and then by from the conjugation we gain find some phase factors uh, that uh, that I, I talk already about these phase factors so so they look this way uh, and now note that two this expression two belongs to, uh, it's a formal Lorentz series in lambda inverse. Uh, then formal Lorentz series in H bar and formal Lorentz series in Q prime plus Z, Q second plus Z. So it's, uh, it's an element of uh, this uh, space. Uh, and now here is one very important observation. Uh, uh, so the ancestor potential is in fact tame. Is tame. And this uh, means the following thing. So if you take the ancestor potential and you write it as a power series, let's write it as a power series in uh, the variables. Uh, let's write it as a formal power series. This is some couple is some uh, sequence of pairs, uh, right? And G could be any integer. Uh, and here we have H bar to the G minus one tk1 i1 tkr ir so i denote with uh, here tki simply means uh, the variable without the dilaton shift so uh, maybe let's write it this way so qki is equal to no, sorry prove it better this so tki is qki plus delta k1 times delta i1 right uh, then uh, this these coefficients have the following property if 3g minus 3 plus r is less than k1 plus etc kr then the coefficient cj of kappa is zero so that's what they means. Uh, this property is satisfied by uh, the witten koncevich tau function just for dimensional reasons, because uh, this coefficient in the witten koncevich tau function, this coefficient is uh, integral over the moduli space MGR. And this number 3G minus 3 plus R is, the, is exactly the dimension of the moduli space. Well, K1 plus KR, these are the, this is the degree of the cohomology class that we're integrating. So if it's more than the dimension, then you must have zero. And then one can check that this uh, symplectic transformation R, the upper triangular one, preserves tameness. Actually, it's, it's more even. Uh, the action of the upper triangular symplectic transformation makes sense only if you apply it to tame functions. Otherwise, it does not make sense in general. 
right? But this is detail I did not discuss in my lecture. Uh, okay, so, but the main conclusion from tameness, from tameness is that uh, this expression two actually has the following, belongs to the following space. Uh, in fact, you have polynomial expression in the periods. And then here is a formal power series in H bar and formal power series in Q prime plus Z, Q second plus Z. So here you, you have uh, all possible periods, right? Uh, just each coefficient is some polynomial finite expression of these periods. Uh, and now the second step. So we, our goal is to prove that these uh, coefficients are polynomials in Wang. Right? Uh, so the second step is uh, uh, we want to prove the following uh, statement. Uh, we want to prove that uh, that two is single valued single valued for lambda in c minus u1 of t so i fix t and then uh, these periods they they could have uh, singularities along the canonical coordinates right but i want to prove that uh, that these functions are actually single valued a priori they're multi-valued Uh, actually, we are going to prove that 2 is single valued for lambda uh, if and only if uh, the ratio of these coefficients is eta a divided by eta b. Uh, and if we do this, uh, uh, then uh, what would be the conclusion from this? Uh, then uh, the regularity condition regularity of 2 is equivalent to proving that 2 is analytic at the points u i of t for all one less or equal to nine, less or equal to nine. Right, because our periods, they have a finite order growth at infinity. So therefore, uh, they have at most polynomial growth at infinity. So if you, if, you, if you have an analytic function in the complex plane that has at most polynomial growth at infinity, it must be a polynomial. This is some version of Louisville's theorem. Um, okay, so, uh, Mm -hmm. And then we will reduce everything to some local analysis around the discrete, around this uh, UI of T. Uh, but so let me prove now that the, that 2 is uh, single valued. So I, and I'm going to prove this direction. So I want to prove that if it's single valued, then the ratio of these coefficients must be eta A over eta B. Um, so, uh, let us fix some reference path right, to T lambda, T lambda, so this is a reference path, and uh, let us pick a simple loop around the discriminant, so this is the discriminant, uh, and this is a simple loop. simple loop L such that uh, the corresponding reflection vector reflection vector is uh, phi equals kappa A minus kappa B right uh, then note that the, the monodromy along this loop, right, so 
let me remind you the formula this is kappa a phi times phi and now i use this proposition where i computed the euler pairing of these chi's so one can check that this is actually equal to one and therefore this becomes chi b so actually this local monodromy uh, switches ka, uh, chi a and chi b and leaves the remaining uh, cycles chi i fixed uh, so therefore the conclusion is that the analytic so the analytic continuation of the vertex operator gamma kappa a of t lambda along l is equal to gamma of kappa chi b t lambda and similarly the analytic continuation of gamma chi b becomes gamma chi a and the remaining vertex operators are invariant under this analytic continuation um, so uh, therefore in order to achieve uh, that this expression is single valued uh, we must require that the analytic continuation of the coefficient analytic continuation along l of b a t lambda equals b b of t lambda but the analytic continuation of uh, of b a along l is exactly the following thing so b a to begin with is b a of lambda times w a of t lambda uh, and then uh, the analytic continuation is uh, uh, as i was arguing before is just integral with respect to the phase form zero and then we want to check that this equals right so we want to check that this equals b b of lambda times w b of t lambda uh, in other words this ratio b a of lambda divided by b b of lambda should be and now i use the formula for w a and w b right it was in terms of this quadratic form so for w b this is exponential w chi b, chi b of t lambda lambda mm. I have to divide by W A, so this would be minus W kappa A kappa A F lambda lambda and minus the integral over the phase form. Right, so this is the, the ratio. Uh, so now using properties two and three uh, from the beginning so maybe I, I show them again what is two and three uh, where was i in the beginning so two uh, we can write this w this quadratic form w uh, in terms of the propagators right uh, and the third property is that we can write the integral uh, along of the phase form also in terms of the propagators right so we do this uh, and then if you do this then we see that this uh, so let me write uh, let me just transform the this expression right uh, then we'll find that so this uh, expression in the blue uh, circle by the blue line could be written first of all i could write it as limit when mu approaches lambda so i want to replace this lambda here by mu the second argument and then it could be written as omega of kappa b kappa chi b t lambda mu minus omega chi b chi b this is the tilde on the mu uh, then here i'll have 
minus omega chi a chi a t lambda mu here i'll have plus omega tilde of chi a chi a lambda mu and then for the integral along uh, the phase form i will have uh, know that here the uh, this uh, local monodromy uh, well i wrote w a it, uh, it should be w k a right so the local monodromy transforms kappa a to kappa b so therefore this becomes exactly minus omega kappa b kappa b uh, chi b on the mu minus omega chi a chi a t lambda mu uh, and then you have uh, the term that involves the quadratic form plus 2 pi i chi a phi times the Euler pairing of uh, phi and chi a right so this follows just from these two conditions two and three and now you can see here that there are many cancels so first of all this term uh, cancels with this one right and this term cancels with this one and for this omega tildes we have explicit formulas right uh, and this is the quadratic form which we can compute right so uh, one can see uh, that uh, that this is exactly one uh, well this expression is this expression is one over n plus one a minus b minus one if a is less than b or one over n plus one a minus b if a is greater or equal than b uh, and therefore, from this we conclude, so from this comp computation, we conclude that BA of lambda divided by BB of lambda is equal to exponential here of this uh, form, uh, term of the quadratic forms. So this is exactly uh, 2 pi i of A minus B over H. And then you have this limit mu approaches lambda e to the omega of kappa a kappa a tilde lambda mu and this is exponential of omega tilde kappa b kappa b lambda mu right uh, but i have explicit formulas for this omega tilde right so i can compute this limit and it turns out that this limit is actually one When you work with other Hirota quadratic equations, what happens is always at this point you get, get something that is not necessarily one. So, but anyways, this uh, this uh, single valuedness of the expression uh, fixes the ratio of the coefficients of our coefficients, uh, and uh, this is what we wanted to prove. Right. So this is exactly eta to the a divided by eta to the b. Uh, okay, so uh, I don't have time to go through the entire argument, but let me just uh, sketch how the argument ends. Uh, right, so the, the final step of the argument is to prove analyticity at lambda equals ui. Uh, and uh, uh, what one, uh, so again you you see that from all the vertex so uh, let us so, so suppose now that uh, suppose that we take a point tau lambda uh, such that lambda is sufficiently close close to ui of t uh, and let uh, let phi equals chi a minus chi b be the reflection vector corresponding to our to the reference path uh, then you can see that from our 
uh, from our exp this expression too, uh, the only terms that have a singularity, that could have a singularity at lambda equals ui, are the ones for which i is a or b. So you have only you have to analyze only these two terms. So in general, from your expression for the Hirota equations, you have to pick all the terms that could have a singularity. Right. And this is what I will denote with three. Right. So we have to prove that this is. Uh, uh, we have to prove three is analytic. analytic uh, at lambda equals ui. Mm. Uh, and then uh, again, so now the total ancestral potential is related to a product of tau functions of KDV by the quantized symplectic transformation. So conjugate three by this operator. Let me denote it with R tilde, right? So that this quantized symplectic transformation, right? Uh, so then, but be, but as we as I explained, when you conjugate a vertex operator, first you have to decompose it into invariant and anti-invariant part. So let me uh, do this uh, decomposition for kappa a, for chi a and chi b. So chi a could be written as alpha plus, in this case, chi a phi is one. So this is one half phi. And uh, chi b is uh, alpha minus one half phi. And here the invariant part for both of them is the same. So alpha is just the, the average. Uh, so this is invariant invariant with respect to local monodromy. So the periods of alpha are analytic. Monodromy. Uh, then three takes the following form. Then three could be written in the following way. Uh, you have this coefficient vi alpha of t lambda. Then we have gamma alpha of t lambda tensor gamma minus alpha of t lambda. Then we have the symplectic transformation. And the rest is what we get when we conjugate the anti-invariant part of the vertex operator. Gamma of one half point lambda minus ui tensor gamma minus one half point lambda minus ui plus and for the other term you get a similar expression And this is applied to a product of tau functions of KDV. Let me not write it right. So what we, we need to prove is that, uh, that these two, uh, that this sum, uh, so we have to prove that this, so the expression in this blue line, uh, so this expression, uh, turns into Hirota quadratic equations for, uh, well, exactly for the i factor uh, in the product of witten concierge tau functions. And it's easy to see that the vertex operators uh, are they match uh, immediately. So the problem is only about the coefficients. Uh, so this expression turns into the Hirota quadratic equations if we prove, so it will turn if we prove that uh, the following two statements. First of all, B A of T lambda 
divided by vi of t lambda is proportional to 1 divided by square root of lambda minus ui. So up to some constant. Uh, and second, and second, uh, uh, b a of t lambda, the, the ratio of the two coefficients must be minus one. So you have to check that this ratio, that this expression. equals minus one right uh, and now I, I don't have time to to do these computations but let me just say that the check of one check of one uh, will give you that uh, the following equation d lambda of uh, logarithm b a lambda equals uh, one over lambda times one over h minus one uh, and th that's why I, uh, that's how we get the formula for B A lambda. Right? Uh, so we get that B A lambda should be proportional to lambda to the one over h minus one, and we know also the ratios of, of B A lambda. Right? So therefore, this fixes the, our choice of B A lambda uniquely. Uh, and then for the second choice, we don't have any freedom, anything else left to, cho to, to choose. We have to check that this is minus one. And check of two, check of two, again, ratio, uh, this expression, uh, expression, not ratio. So uh, two can be expressed, can be expressed in terms of the propagators, of the propagators. Uh, we have some integral, uh, so uh, if you remember, if you recall the definition of VIB and VIA, uh, there are some integrals uh, along uh, of the, that involve the phase form. And the difference of these two integrals will give you exactly some closed contour. And the integral along a closed contour of the phase form, uh, thanks to this property three, right? Let me show it again. Uh, it's here. Thanks to this property, we can write it in terms of the propagators. And uh, the other coefficient, uh, the other part of the coefficients, they are given in terms of this W, this quadratic form W, which is also written in terms of propagators. So therefore, if you do, uh, if you if you use these properties, just like in the proof of the single value of this, uh, you can express everything in terms of the propagators, and everything could be. Uh, 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 many things will cancel out, you get some explicit expression to compute and you have to see that it's, it will give you minus one, uh, right? So I, I don't have time to show this time, but uh, there is no new ideas, right? So the, the argument here for two is very similar to the single value of this. So I, I stop here. Thank you very much. Um... Are there questions? Um, so this is um, more like a lambda Gins model, right? Yeah, yes, this A N is what is called Landau Ginsburg model okay. model. And yes. then uh, given Tao had a complaint about this because uh, okay. he invented mirror symmetry okay. uh, exactly in this way that uh, <laughs> okay. that quantum cohomology corresponds to, to this and then everybody calls it a Landau Ginsburg model. Okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe we should call given the model both <laughs> or or Saito given the whatever, whatever you call it. <laughs> no, he wrote something like a joke in his paper that usually in mathematics there is a principle that uh, oh, that's that the inventions are never 
uh, named by the people who invented them. Uh, so not, uh, no. <laughs> they must be named by someone else, not yeah, by the name okay. of them. <laughs> I see. I see. Yes. And uh, which one is gravitational descendant uh, in this case? Uh, but uh, does it involve you, gravitational descendants? Yes, yeah, yeah, this tau, this uh, total ancestor total potential, potential. Is the, involves the gravitational descendants. Okay, right? I see. Yeah, I see. Uh -huh. And how does it have to? So you may mention about one thing about the Kimura piston or W algebra. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yes, so uh, I can, uh, you know, this is related to, uh, mm -hmm. to, to what I said in the beginning. Yep. You see, my, my work is uh, here in some folk space that uh, where the total descendant and total ancestor potential live. But you might ask, well, if, if you have any Landau Ginsburg model, how do you choose this Hirota quadratic equation? So today I, I, I I showed you, if you give me the Hirota quadratic equations, what mm -hmm. to do with them and how to reduce them to KDV, right? Mm -hmm. But then one might ask, well, how can we uh, guess such Hirota quadratic equations? And mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, what we discovered with Boško Bakalov is that uh, what is written here in, in red. So you have to work in a different space. You have to work with the lattice vertex operator, operator algebra. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the algorithm that I explained today is going to work as long as you can find a state omega, uh -huh. uh, which is in the tensor product of, uh, of V lambda, V lambda, uh, which is in the kernel of this uh, screening operator. So these are equations that are specified by all uh, reflection vectors. Uh -huh. Uh, right, and in our case, maybe I can show you in, in our case, in the case in a n case, mm -hmm. uh, in a n case, well, strictly speaking, we, we embed this lattice vertex algebra in a slightly bigger one, mm -hmm. uh, where this is, this is the root lattice or the reflection lattice, but here I need the, I have the weight lattice the way to what is and these elements here you have this e to the kappa a they, they belong here mm -hmm. well here you have the differences oh. right yeah. uh, and uh, what we our element the element omega that you that we use in this case is a from one to n plus one e to the k chi a tensor e to the minus chi a and then you can check that e to the alpha zero tensor one plus one tensor e to the alpha zero of this omega is zero. Uh, and actually uh, there is a paper of uh, Katz and Wakimoto mm -hmm. uh, that uh, describes actually that all the solutions, uh, this state omega in this lattice vertex algebra corresponding to the weight lattice, mm -hmm. uh, generates a Virasoro vertex algebra. Mm -hmm. So so the solutions of these equations, right? In V lambda tensor V lambda tilde, right? Uh, it's a vert it's a lot it's a vertex sub algebra in the tensor square, which it can be proved that it's a Virasoro it's isomorphic to the Virasoro vertex algebra and is generated by this state. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, this is the generator of all these uh, relations, and that's the one that we used. I see. Uh, I see. And actually, if you want to work in V lambda, then there is another choice. So there is an, okay. another element. Maybe I can call it uh, Omega Katz Wakimoto, mm -hmm. which belongs to V lambda tensor V lambda, mm -hmm. and this Omega Katz Wakimoto is can be written as you. You take sum over all reflection vectors. You take E alpha tensor E minus alpha. And now there is something for the Cartan subalgebra. So you have to take HI tensor HI, uh, where this HI is a basis of the Cartan subalgebra. Uh -huh. right? And then again, you can check that E alpha zero 
tensor 1 plus 1 tensor E alpha 0. Mm -hmm. uh, omega cos vacimoto is equal to 0 for all reflection vectors. Awesome. And if you use this tape, then you obtain a different uh, uh, Hirota quadratic equation uh, for the total descendant potential. And one can prove that the two are equivalent. So somehow this omega cuts Vakimoto mm -hmm. in some sense is the square root of omega. So omega, more precisely, the, the product of omega and omega dual mm -hmm. uh, is omega cuts Vakimoto. So therefore, so this relation allows you to prove that the two set of Hirota quadratic equations are equivalent. I see. Uh, and now, uh, what I said about the work of uh, Pestun and Kimura. Yeah. So Kimura and Pestun. Mm -hmm. Kimura and Pestun. Uh, they, uh, in case if if lambda equals the root lattice root lattice of a quiver mm -hmm. of, a, of some quiver Q, okay. uh, they, uh, then they have a method for constructing so solutions to this. Uh, uh, well, they don't have, they didn't write it for the tensor square, but suppose that you're interested in, in the following set. Uh, uh, let me call it W, maybe mm -hmm. lambda or W probably more correctly, it should be called WR. Um, these are all vectors in the lattice vertex algebra that satisfy uh, this equation for all alpha in R. Mm -hmm. And in this case, they have a, uh, they have a method for constructing uh, uh, such, a, such a state uh, so you see, if you have your quiver, right, some mm -hmm. quiver okay. and you associate to it some kind of dimension vectors, W1, W2, etc. Mm -hmm. Then they have a method to construct a state for this, for this uh, choice of the dimension vector uh, in satisfying this uh, screening uh, relation. But, uh, you know, somehow their construction is really for some quiver gauge theory, which yeah. I think it's, it's five dimensional. Yeah. Uh, and you have to take some limits. So there's, there are two parameters, Q1 yeah. and Q2. Yeah. And there, yeah. are many, uh, there, there are characters actually of C2, mm -hmm. which is uh, in some sense is this Minkowski space, R4, yeah. right? So, but you have to take a certain limit. I see. And in, when you take their limit, uh, uh, their uh, this screening equation that they have, which is in terms of these parameters Q1 and Q2, turns into that one. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, in the state that they construct, it's some infinite sum. Uh, so, if you fix this dimension vector, then they have some infinite sum that involves all, all dimension vectors. Mm -hmm. And the coefficients that they take are given in terms of uh, some integrals of Nakaji over Nakajima quiver varieties. Somehow the it, it, what, 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 what yeah. is the integral of Nakajima quiver? They have some, they call it character. I think oh, it's okay. uh, the Krasov introduced some characters. Yeah, QQ Q character, yeah. Yeah, QQ character. Yeah. And uh, this QQ character, their statement is that it satisfies the screening equation. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, and uh, this QQ character has this form. It's infinite sum uh, yeah. whose coefficients are, can be written as integral or integrals over Nakajima quiver varieties. And okay, yeah. Uh, by the way, mathematically, I, I still didn't verify their statement. Even in the case of the simplest quiver, SL2, mm -hmm. SL2 uh, it's still, you know, the, the integrals that you get are some, you have to compute some. Uh, I mean, the Nakajima quiver varieties then become over the cotangent space of, of a projective, of projective spaces. Yeah. Uh, and, but nevertheless, the integrant is quite complicated. And, yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't have a mathematical proof of their statement. I, see. I, I just checked that, uh, that uh, somehow it's compatible with what 
mm -hmm. what I expect. Mm -hmm. And in our case, it's true that we need V lambda square, right? Not V lambda. But maybe there's a way, maybe you take two copies of the quiver or something like this. So, oh, you know, this story with finding the W algebra in the elements of this uh, uh -huh. integrable hierarchy, it's really, mm -hmm. they're really very parallel, so. I see. Uh -huh. So this omega, you mentioned it's a generating function, Virasoro algebra. Yeah, one can check that if you, if you look into this, uh, the solutions of these okay. equations, okay. Uh, they're going to give you a, a vertex sub-algebra of uh, V lambda tilde square. Okay. So this is a, a vertex operator algebra. Okay. And the solution okay. would be a sub-vertex algebra. Uh -huh. uh, and one can prove that it's uh, isomorphic to the Virasoro uh, vertex algebra uh -huh. uh, and it is uh, generated by state omega. I see. So it's more like a stress energy tensor in physics. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I see. And it commutes uh, with screen charges. That's what you mean. This equation means. Right. Yes. And in my settings, maybe one more remark. In, uh -huh. in my settings, uh, I have to apply this representation in order to get to my to, to this fox uh, given tau's fox space uh -huh. fox space uh, you simply map this e to the kappa a to gamma of chi a right mm -hmm. and then uh, so you need to use also some coefficients uh, in order to preserve locality right uh -huh. Uh, so that's uh, actually another way to see what the coefficient should be in these Hirota quadratic equations. Uh, mm -hmm. They come from, you want this map from, uh, that associates this uh, vector in the lattice vertex algebra to the vertex operator. Mm -hmm. You want to modify this by some coefficient mm -hmm. so that it becomes a representation of a, uh, it, it will be a twisted representation of the lattice vertex algebra. Mm -hmm. And then you see there is basically a unique choice to do that. I see. Right. And my, my claim is that every time you, you manage to choose such a state, then by using this uh, formalism that I explained, mm -hmm. you'll be able to prove that the total descendant potential is a solution. I see. Right. Uh -huh. I see. Right, so in some sense, the problem is uh, in the in, is in the theory of what is vertex algebras. Oh, uh, I see. right. I see. But uh, there is also another approach. Maybe uh, I think that there might be uh, uh, another possibility is to work, uh, just to continue to work in these settings, but to consider more interesting examples. Uh, namely, I. Uh, so I told you that my approach so far stops here at two, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then you have also another cases where the orbifold Toiler characteristic of this projective finds less than zero. Mm -hmm. Or if you take a manifold with a dimension more than one. Mm -hmm. So if you manage to make a break in one of these cases, uh -huh. uh, maybe this would give you a hint also for this problem here. Oh. So right now I have two hopes. One of them is that I make a breakthrough in an example. Uh -huh. And the other uh, hope is that I understand the work of uh, Kimura and Pestun. I see. Right. But, but Just to understand why their statement is true mathematically. Right? But how, how about like a, like, a or, like a higher dimension project space, like a PN yeah. and so on? Uh, uh, you mean here? Uh, I don't. So you mentioned that the, uh, yeah, here, so dimension is greater than one, it means, what does that mean? Uh, Nothing is, I, I don't know any Hirota quadratic equations, oh. the dimension of the target is more than one. So even like a usual projective space, like P2. Even, even P2, just P2, oh, P2. I think P2 I is the best candidate. Okay. Uh, because for P2, we know all the reflection vectors, we know the monodromy group, Everything that you want to know for the Frobenius structure is uh -huh. uh, uh, is known. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, it's a, it's a very good candidate to to try to to run this machinery on I P2. See. I see. Right. P2 is still open to find this yes. the yes. underlying this integral hierarchy. I see. Yes. From my I point see. of view, P2 is a very difficult case. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, 
Polar algebraic geometry P2 is a boring uh, <laughs> for me it's very complicated. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions from audience? Uh, this is the last chance to ask Todor. Uh, since the audience are very silent. But um, I really enjoy the lectures. Thank you very much. Um, let's thank the Todor by um, unmuting and uh, just clap <laughs> with your hand for okay. wonderful lectures. Uh, there are lots of open problems. I, if I found time, I want to think about this. Um, Thank you very much. Well, uh, well, I also want to thank you for organizing these lectures because uh, mm -hmm. I think that the work that I presented is based on things that I did for over the last 10 years, even more than 10 years. So for me, it was a very good chance to to look mm -hmm. back to, to the things that I did, to clean up the things that I don't need and to, okay. <laughs> uh, to have a better understanding of what I actually did. <laughs> But for me, it was also very useful, actually. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. It was very nice. And yeah, there are lots of open problems from these lectures. I try to think about it. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially this Kimura, the connection to Kimura Plus. Yeah, this quiver gauge theory look really very, very interesting yeah. to me. And uh, Right, so uh, I think that, uh, and especially I think that they give more than the vertex algebra. So they have these two Q parameters that yeah. are more structured than the, yeah. the vertex operator mm -hmm. algebra. So, That's true. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. I think as usual, physicists are ahead of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mathematicians, I think there are quite a bit mathematicians working in vertex algebra, but... Yeah. Oh, physicists are already working on higher dimensional things. Yeah. So I think that there is a lot of mathematics there that is not understood yet. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So I will stop.